Drowning in discouragement. Have you ever been discouraged? Well, that's like asking somebody, are you a human? Because the answer is yes. We've all been there, and you may be there right now. And I want to tell you, there are two paths that you can take. One is a path of destruction and drowning and dying in it, or there is another path that the Lord has provided for us, and I want to show you that for sure. But I go back to Numbers, uh, chapter 21. The children of Israel were discouraged. They were discouraged because of a lack of patience. God wasn't doing and performing the way they felt like he should perform. Well, there's a lot of reasons why we're discouraged, and that might not be one of them with you. I mean, discouragement comes because sometimes we're just tired. Uh, we have a tendency to work hard and, and things are not working the way we think they ought to work out. We get discouraged because of a physical problem, but discouragements do come. And in the case of Israel, it was because they had been out in the wilderness so long that they got angry. And they said, Moses, why'd you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? And of course, Moses turned to God. He said, Lord, what, what, what should we do? The people are turning against you. And we're talking about people that have seen the miracle hand of God working for them, through them. They saw all that you read about in, in Exodus. The, the opening of the Red Sea and the providing of the water and the manna from heaven, uh, the, the plagues that came upon Pharaoh, they saw all of this. And yet, they get discouraged because something doesn't work out the way they think it ought to work out. And it angered God. And to the extent that they said, okay, he caused uh, fiery serpents to come upon the people to sting them. And they had sores that were very, very uh, infectious to the extent that some of Israel died. So what were they going to do? God, have you got a remedy? Well, first off, let me just talk about the discouragement like the children of Israel had. Where, it, where did it lead them? And, and I'm telling you these things because I don't want it to lead you into these paths, the path of discouragement that leads to uh, unbelief and doubt. The children of Israel doubted God. And sometimes we get that same way. We doubt God. We doubt His existence. We doubt that He answer prayer. If He does live, does He care about us? And all these doubts rush into our minds. And of course, that's the playground for the enemy because he wants to enhance all those feelings and all those thoughts. Discouragement can lead you to a life of selfishness. Oh, look at little old me. And we have a little old pity party. And it grows to the extent that nobody really wants to be around you. Then you, it, it leads you to uh, a weakened state of being to where you give way to temptation. You're discouraged on this level. You're discouraged right here. You're discouraged over here. And all of a sudden, the enemy puts forth something a little shiny. And you say, you know, maybe that is what's going to help me overcome. And we succumb to that temptation, which leads us only to a further place of despair. Discouragement can cause you to be ill-tempered. Yeah, you just... You bite the people that you, you bite the, the heads off of the people that you, you, that you love. You say things you wish you hadn't have said. Things you know you're going to regret, but you say them anyway because you're angry. But you're discouraged. Things aren't going right for you. And then you, you get discouraged, which causes maybe your tongue to say words that maybe you, you, you don't want to say. Uh, uh, say things, uh, grievous words to people that you, you care about. Uh, this kind of goes along with that, that anger. And discouragement can cause you to be a discourager, discouraging other people. Uh, you see somebody that's up and everything's going good for them, and somehow or another you just have a tendency to want them to come down to where you are, like misery loves company. Well, these seven paths that I talked about are not the path you want to take. So if you're in a discouraged state, and the children of Israel were, they said, what are we going to do? And God showed Moses something that seemed to be a little bit, hmm, a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. 
But said, all right, Moses, take that pole. And he made a, a bronze serpent. He put it on that pole. He said, now tell the people to look upon the serpent. No matter where they were, if they looked upon that serpent, they were immediately healed and restored. And that's what we've got to do when we get into that place of discouragement. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For you see, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he mentioned that as a serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. And who is he? He's the one who can take care of that which ails you. Look unto Jesus. Don't doubt God. Don't turn from him. It's like biting the very hand that feeds you. Look unto him. And that day, Moses said, this is the only cure. You will not be cured any other way. This is the way. And that's what the Lord is saying today. He's saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes into the Father except He come by way of me. No one is ministered to and touched in the way that they need to be except they turn to me. So look unto the Lord. Let Him touch you and minister to you. I want to have my grandson to come and help me play and sing a song about our Lord who is the glory of and the lifter of our heads. He's the one who can lift us out of a place of despondency, discouragement, and he'll set your feet upon high ground. He's the glory and the lifter of my head. The glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of your my glory and the lifter of my glory and the lifter of my head. Amen, and may he be that to you this very day.